What screams I am an emotionally healthy and well adjusted individual. Bad it happens to them and they're bothered by it, but then roll with it and continue along their journey. A balance between being affected by your day to day life but not letting it divert your life's journey. I do. All the time. But nobody seems to believe me. Strong principles but flexible opinions. Calm in debate and stressful situations. Does not give a ducker about how other people live their lives. Full stop. They can deal with stress without panicking or freaking out. I noticed this with my current girlfriend. I always thought I was doing okay until I met her. What I noticed was she was cool and legitimately happy with other people's achievements and success. I was not. I always thought I was. But whenever I was in a tough situation in life, seeing other people achieve something good made me sad inside. I never showed it so nobody had ever noticed until she called me out on it. That's when I realized if you are emotionally well adjusted in life and happy with who you are. Not only you won't care what your friends achieve and where they are standing in life, you'll genuinely be happy for them. If you're willing to admit when you're wrong, or when you're not good at something, you're probably doing okay. If you're too proud and secure to admit your failures and weaknesses, then you're probably either a ticking time bomb or a doormat. Receiving constructive criticism graciously and appropriately. Edit. Holy cow. 15k upvotes. For what has probably been my shortest comment ever. Thanks guys. Not caring what other people are doing. You like rap? Cool. You like jazz? Great. You're married at 18? Congratulations. You're sleeping around and partying at 35? Sounds fun. Dude. You're a high powered manager? Sounds interesting. What's your favorite part of it? You're a writer? Sounds interesting. What's your favorite part? You work in McDonald's. I think we're getting the hang of this. A. Same question. When what they're doing for work isn't the important part. The important part is that they enjoy what they do. You're gay, straight, be trans, whatever else. Okay, cool. Let me know your preferred gender pronouns and or introduce me to your partner. I'd love to meet them. The ultimate sign of having your it together is not having to live your life through other people's drama, nor judging them for their choices, but instead just being nice to people. An entire plate of Totino's pizza rolls. Edit. I misread the title. When bad things happen like a drink gets spilled or an object is lost or forgotten, a well-adjusted person will be over it relatively quickly. An unwell-adjusted person will harp on it blame themselves or get angry for an unnecessarily extended period of time. A ton of lemons in a bowl on the dining room table. Being able to laugh at yourself. Not feeling the need to argue with people whom you think are wrong. Doing the boring stuff of life like going to the dentist doctor, maintaining your possessions, regular oil changes if you have a car, keeping your things clean, and building healthy social bonds. When you are depressed none of this feels like it matters, and the lack of care only pulls you down further. Being able to communicate effectively and maturely, despite being angry upset. I think you can tell a lot about where someone is mentally by how they react to being cut off in traffic. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Someone who can't avoid a physical fight. Someone who can address a, an, angry upset person in a calm demeanor. Edit. Thank you to all. I am much gooder at grammar now. Being able to admit out loud when you are wrong. And when your so is right. Nothing. Well adjusted people don't need to scream. Being able to accept criticism. The person has a job. Friends. A place to live and doesn't post a lot on social media. Having the nerve to stay alone. Treating the janitor the same as the CEO. I would say not screaming I am an emotionally healthy and well adjusted individual. Someone who folds and puts away their laundry immediately after taking it out of the dryer. Not blowing up on retail employees. Only crying 2 hours a day. Long term friendships with people of all genders. 
Being able to keep your cool when something doesn't go your way or someone disagrees with you on a hot topic issue. Understanding that the goal of a public debate isn't to convince your opponent. It's to convince people in the audience who might be sitting on the fence about the topic at hand. Bonus points if you can stand to be around people who make life choices that you wouldn't have made. Even though their choices really hurt no one. Without treating those people like a bag of it. A firm. Assertive. But friendly handshake. No aggressive yanking or crushing. Combined with a moment of eye contact and a warm smile. Not feeling the need to exact vengeance on others. Even when feeling wronged or slighted. Having at least one or two long term friends. 3 plus years of consistently being a friend. Stable employment history. With appropriately moving on when skill sets increase or change. Non-constant stream of relationships. Auto-ending relationships when they've run their course or are no longer healthy even if the relationship doesn't get the bragging rights of being long term. Not afraid of being alone. But at the same time doesn't completely shun social interaction. Being content on your own without validation. Affection or attention from other people. Edit. Being content on your own without the constant need for validation, affection, and attention from other people. If they are dressed up as Spider-Man. Strong indicator. Bought some pizza at Costco. Sat down at their tables. Family of five sitting near us. Mother in a sing sanji tune tells her kids don't use your shirt. Use a napkin. IDKY. But I knew that family had their it together. The ability to keep your cool and remain calm in situations where any other person would explode in a rage-fueled obscenity-filled retaliation. Looks at self. Anything but that. The ability to entertain a thought without accepting it and by extension, remaining calm and collected when someone has an opposing viewpoint from yours that may otherwise upset or make others not stable frantic. No I'm not talking about opposing viewpoints like Hitler did nothing wrong or absurd positions like those. Though they aren't really worth responding to, I mean more credible discussions on issues such as gun control, the healthcare debate, money in politics, LGBTQ rights and gender identity etc. Honestly, nothing. If someone is an emotionally healthy and well adjusted individual, you aren't going to think anything of it or really notice. It's kind of the expected default. So you're just going to notice when someone isn't. Nobody on reddit that's for sure. Being okay with being single and not needing partners or relationships. I thought about this a bit. I think having strong healthy mutually beneficial long term connections is a good sign of it. Not just long term acquaintances. But true deep connections as friends and in relationships that are meaningful and where both parties truly let each other in and know each other well and share mutual respect, love, care for each other. People who are not emotionally healthy and well adjusted cannot let people get close. Can't let them in and maintain a connection of any depth. They might have loads of long term acquaintances they keep at arm's length. But not true deep friendships that stand the test of time, life, obstacles, etc. It's impossible to maintain in-depth connections if you yourself are not emotionally healthy and well adjusted. If you don't value yourself you won't let others in deep enough to value them or the bond in a way that keeps it strong through whatever life throws at you or them. That takes a kind of emotional stability that some people just lack. Regular sleeping patterns. Generally not getting too upset about something. It's funny. Take politics and America for example. I'm a North African immigrant, Arab Muslim, friends with tons of immigrants, mostly from Africa, Middle East, or South America. Now we all hate Trump and the ban and all that, but it, it is what it is. Nobody ever complains. We gotta keep moving. We have families back home we have people that need to eat. It's just funny to me how it's always white middle class people that yell the loudest in politics. The people it barely ever affects. The people that truly struggle and have lived a life of hard work. I've noticed most of them haven't said it about Trump or politics. Because honestly, we have things to worry about that more immediately impact us. So if you get really up in arms about that I assume your life is too boring or too easy because at the end of the day you are barely ducking affected by any of it as much as you're convinced yourself you are. You lose some health insurance. My family back home starves. Like I said. Bigger things to worry about. 
I want someone to personally give me a list of things that changed for them since Trump. Personally. Keeping well-mannered and focusing on solutions during a crisis in private among less powerful members of their own family. A lot of people handle stressful situations well only because it seems necessary. They realize that showing anger at the boss will cost their job so they bottle up that anger. Carry it home. And yell at their kid when a jar of jam slips through the kid's hand and breaks on the floor. That sort of person tends to really lose it if something important goes wrong at home. A well-adjusted individual is different. When the roof springs a leak they coordinate with other family members to move furniture out of the way and get towels and a bucket to catch the drips. Then they work out a plan for fixing the problem without dumping on anyone in the process. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. But make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. Or being lied about. Don't deal in lies. Or being hated. Don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good. Nor talk too wise. If you can dream. And not make dreams your master. If you can think. And not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster. And treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken. Twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Or watch the things you gave your life to. Broken. And stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings. And risk it on one turn of pitch and toss. And lose. And start again at your beginnings. And never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew. To serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you. Except the will which says to them. So hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue. Or walk with king's son or lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you. If all men count with you. But none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute. With 60 seconds worth of distance run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And so which is more so I'll be a man emotionally healthy and well adjusted individual. My son. They don't base their worth on things that are outside of their control. They know who they are. And are comfortable with themselves. What does it look like when somebody doesn't have this foundation? Insecurity. Dentists. I don't know why but they always seem like they got their it together. Exercising regularly and eating healthy diet it requires a level of determination, self-love, and energy that many people suffering from depression or other mental struggles don't have. Reading this thread is a bit eye-opening for me. I see a pieologist about every month. Because of bipolar IW ultra rapid cycling, I've been told, by several doctors, that I'm the most well-adjusted patient they have ever had. I'd always assumed that was just a thing they were saying to make me feel better about my condition. Admittedly I rarely have severe swings. But still, how well adjusted can you get with a condition like that? Judging by the comments here. Very well indeed. I fit most of the top comments described here. Apparently, I used to have a self esteem boost of that magnitude. I've had kinda a claptastic day. So thanks, Reddit. Not only being happy but a strong ability to cheer other people up. People who understand there are two sides to a coin. What I mean by that is, someone who can both accept responsibility in a relationship in a variety of contexts, good and bad, as well as someone who doesn't take on another individual's unhealthy crap and make it their fault. In other words, someone with good emotional intelligence. I know it's become popular to say you're not responsible for someone else's happiness. But I don't believe that's true. People who recognize they're responsible for how they treat others while simultaneously setting boundaries are truly healthy. Emo. Someone who doesn't notice when they forgot their phone. Everyone talking about emotional stuff. And here I sit thinking. A clean bathroom with no pubic hair on the seat or dry toothpaste on the sink. Two indicators come to mind. One, being receptive to constructive criticism. Two, as comfortable with making conversation as maintaining silence. Not caring which way your toilet paper hangs. Refusing to join in the complaining party. Even more, gently moving the topic toward a solution. 
having a mostly positive relationship with their family and friends most of the time and having the skills necessary to resolve problems when they do arise. Resilience. The ability to roll with what life throws at you and keep on moving forward. Handling rejection without lashing out on the other person. Being able to accept criticism. I don't know why some people are so deeply unable to do that. Tupperware. Having the time, energy and motivation to plan and cook all your meals for a week. Magic. Bonus points for healthy food. Not being happy 24 stroke 7 and sometimes feeling like you don't want to hang around people right now. Too many people who are perfectly healthy oversell the idea that they are never sad, out of fear of being labeled depressed. And those people who are actually depressed, let the idea that because they actually felt a feeling other than happiness happen mean they are relapsing. It's okay to feel sad sometimes. Also, speaking at normal volumes. Not screaming I am an emotionally healthy and well adjusted individual. Quiet competence and graceful acceptance of setback. Nothing. We speak at a comfortable volume. Being happy for other success. A healthy dose of self-deprecating humor. I don't mean someone who has zero confidence and feels every joke should be at their expense. I mean someone who can take and make jokes aimed towards their appearance. Personality. Or demeanor. Accepting it when someone breaks up with you. Hey wanna go out sometime? Oh I'm sorry. I'm not looking to date right now. That's fine. Sorry to bother you. Have a nice day. We are all emotionally unhealthy and that's okay. When someone else gets some award, promotion or other some such thing that they are also in the running for, they don't throw a hissy fit or cry foul. Bonus points if they can congratulate the other person. Generally being able to give people the benefit of the doubt. Not letting them walk all over you. But at the same time not getting instantly offended and angry if you feel they have wronged you. I notice it a lot on the internet. For example. Today I described my puppy as ADHD in a comment thread. One person called me out. Saying you're using an ableist slur. Why you gotta be using ableist slurs? Stop using ableist slurs. Another person sent me a PM saying I just wanted to let you know that using ADHD as a descriptor is ableist. It's possible you didn't know and I just wanted to tell you. It was pretty obvious to me who the more well adjusted person was in that interaction. Working in the restaurant business also has shown me this. The people who come across more well adjusted are those who will calmly ask about errors. Not flip out and refuse to pay. Someone who is willing to admit they made a mistake and willing to take responsibility for their actions. A lot of men on Tinder seem to scream that at me a lot. Being able to see other points of view to see where others are coming from. If they don't have a Tinder. Asking for help when you know you need it. Being able to go to the gym. Or for a run. Or anything really. And not need to brag about it or post it online. When someone says you've upset them. Hearing them say what they will be doing to fix the situation in the future. Not just that they expect you to fix it. Active listening skills. Accepting that other people's beliefs can be different than yours. You're still friends with your exes. Exercising at 6am before going to work. I see this people and just think well you have your it about a million times more together than I do. Not saying it like if you can't handle me at my worst then you don't deserve me at my best. Being comfortable enough to admit when you aren't. Depression frequently hides behind a smile. Anger and insecurity has a tendency to lash irrationally. Not verbally screaming I am an emotionally healthy and well adjusted individual in public. Ironically, this has the opposite effect.